Melbourne Rovers return to the Championship action this coming weekend up against Amari Bell and Luton Town. But will Big Bad Boy Burton Diaz be there or is he banned? We'll take a look at it next. That's right, folks, back once again with another match preview. Looking forward to Blackburn Rovers taking on Luton Town at Ewood Park. And we'll get to that in just one second. If you're new, wave you in. Smash your subscribe button to get your bang out today with all things Blackburn Rovers related, championship related, world football related. We're going to all hear under one Ruski. That's right, of course, question marks remain over whether Big Bad Boy Burton Diaz will feature or he will not feature this coming weekend because of FIFA rules and all this bullshit. Oh, I don't know. It's a mess. Anyway, we'll talk about that and more in just a second. Of course, a big, big shout out to the VIPs and. Doo -doo 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 you <laughs> squeaky clean Patreon boys and girls, Connor Madlin. Welcome to the gang. I do appreciate your support, of course. Thank you for coming. The latest member of the Patreon gang. We'll get your name in lights at the end of the show, uh, of course. So make sure you you stick around. That he's, he's become the latest member of the gang. The boys and girls. If you want to join him and the gang, check out the link down below. Patreon.com forward slash overseas. You are my new best mate for life, brotherhood. That's right. You've come in. You support the channel. I do appreciate that, guys. Thank you very much. Anyway, if you want to join him, check out the links. Anyway, here we go. We're going to jump in the deep end. Have a look at Rovers uh, taking on uh, Luton Town. That's right, of course, over at Ewa Park this coming weekend. So it's a chance for uh, for Rovers to get some points under the offering. Of course, not not not, not a difficult, not an easy war. I've got war. Watch my words there. Not a easy game. Of course, Luton Town have uh, have been uh, shit house merchants against Ewa, uh, against Rovers for the past few seasons. Uh, Nathan Jones, of course, extraordinary. You know, with the, the especially at their own turf, got the ball boys working a treat. But of course, this is at our turf and hopefully we can get the better of them this time around. Anyways, take a little look at Rovers just in case you are a Luton Town fan, just in case you just stunned by the crown of this video. Uh, of course the Rovers do play the football at Ewood Park which has a capacity around about 31,367 on a good day. Our manager is Tony Mowbray, captain is Darren Lenahan of course and our nearest match for the away day fans when they go on the road is up against Preston North End. The most distance they'll have to travel will be up against Bournemouth last time around. We did finish 15th. The odds way back when was 20 to 1 to, uh, to, to get promoted as championship. My prediction is still 10th I think something along those lines. Meanwhile let's take a little look at of course the recent run in for Rovers heading into this. Of course, pre international break, we did take on Middlesbrough and we drew. Following on uh, prior to that, we did lose to West Brom at home. Of course, they are the, the, the leaders at the moment in, in the championship. Of course, they are uh, probably my tip to get promoted. So it was a credible, credible performance, even though it was a little bit nervy in the end. Uh, prior to that, we did beat uh, Forest on the road, drew with Millwall, and of course, lost to Morecambe. Let's get that one. Hopefully, next week, we won't have to see that again. Uh, kick it off forward. Let's take a look at the possession stats then for Rovers. Uh, more often than not, coming down the right-hand side, of course, 40% of all of our possession coming down the right-hand side, and the possession has been split in these three quarters, or thirds, should I say, 40% down the middle, 30% on, on the, either in the attacking or defensive third. At the moment. Of course, it's a completely different game now for Rovers, not playing the uh, not playing the, uh, the possession-based football that we did last season, which got us nowhere. We're playing more of a counter-attacking style, uh, of course, getting the ball whenever we can, and, of course, trying to uh, piece something together. Maybe maybe we can flip between the two uh, on, on a... On a, on a on a push of a button, of course. Uh, kick it off for the shots coming down there. Eight percent down the middle, eleven percent down the right, nine percent down the left. Sixty-four of sixty-four percent of all of our shots in the eighteen-yard box, nine percent in the six-yard box, and twenty-seven percent long-range cookies. Let's take a look. Of course, the shots, wow, all the goals, how they've gone in. Uh, three of them have been from set pieces, two from counter attacks, one open play, and one penalty. I think Diaz was the one that put the penalty away. As for the goals conceded, five goals have been conceded through open play and one counter attack. No set pieces, no penalties so far. Let's keep it that way. Of course, kick it off forward. This is the shot ratio uh, for the uh, opposition, of course, received by Rovers. 72% of all our shots received have been down the middle, 90% down the right, 9% down the left. As for the shot zones, 41% is in the 18 yard box, 45% long range cookies, and 40% in that scrappy W area. Let's take a look at, of course, this, the goals then. Or the, the, man, the, man, the man, the myth, the legend is Diaz with three goals so far. He's the top goal scorer for Rovers. Gallagher's got himself a couple as well. Ayala and Lennon so far. Dolan's on there as well. He's got a goal. As for uh, the uh, yellows, Ayala's got himself a couple of yellows. As well, Buckley with a two and Cart's got two. He's also got a red, uh, so he will not be involved with this match. Uh, for this game, uh, this is actually my lineup for this one. Of course, I've gone with the fact that I think Diaz is going to be suspended. I hope I'm wrong. If I'm wrong, it will be a completely different look to this. But we're going to go with, with with this with the mindset that he's not involved. So it will be Kaminsky between the sticks, Pickering at left back, Rankin Castellos on the verge of a combat. He did play some under 23 actions, of course, with Carter out. Nyambe maybe, but might be back. 
he wasn't involved with uh, Namibia, so he should be on the cusp of returning. So it's going to be a coin toss between Raki Costello and Nayambi for that right back spot. Either way, I'm not really fussed. It could, it could you know, it could be, you know, whatever. I, I probably would probably give uh, Nay uh, uh, Nayambi the role and Raki Costello to make a, a cameo from the bench. That's probably what I would go with. But uh, you know, we're going with this. Uh, Ayala at the back there alongside Lennon as well. Meanwhile, Rothwell, Travis, and Buckley make up a three-man midfield. It's quite an attacking look to that midfield trio. And again, it's 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 if uh, Bre Martin Diaz is available and to play. He will probably be up there uh, in the attacking three and then maybe Clarkson will be down there for Buckley and then Buckley will probably t take a spot on the, on the bench, I would think. Um, so, yeah, it's 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 a coin toss at the moment of, of how all this pans out. But this is what my gut my gut tells me this. So Clarkson will play on the left-hand side. He's the low knee from, from Liverpool. We have Pavida Ocampo on, on the right-hand side, of course, for uh, for Leeds and Gallagher. Maybe down the middle. I, I'm just... This is the way I would do it. I uh, wouldn't put Gallagher on the right or left. Put him down the middle. He had a, scored a bangering goal against uh, Middlesbrough to give us a share of the sport, points last, last time around. Hopefully, he can get another goal uh, this weekend to give him some real confidence, of course, moving into uh, a good month of uh, possibility for Rovers. Let's take a look at that, at that month. Of course, uh, the next five games, we've got Hull City uh, at Ewood Park as well. A, a very winnable game. Of course, the return of the King of Ewood. Uh, Smallwood will be back wearing the captain's arm for Hull as well. And then we take on Barnsley again. A, a decent opportunity for Rovers to get some points uh, on this one. And then follow that up with a, a tricky game against Cardiff at Ewood. And then follow that up against Huddersfield. And then Blackpool, of course, a bit of a local affair there. As for Luton, of course, they play the games at Kenilworth Road uh, with around about 10,000 capacity. Nathan Jones is your manager. Sonny Bradley is your capitano. The nearest match for them, of course, for the away day fans, is QPR. The most distance off the travel be up against Middlesbrough. Last time around, they did finish 12th. Uh, the odds was 40-1, to 1, I believe, way back when. And 9th ninth, ninth is where my, my prediction was at the start of the season. Uh, of course, this is their resume heading into this. Not brilliant by uh, Luton Town. I feel they've, all, they've had, had a bit of a rough patch. Back-to-back -back games without scoring a goal. Drawing with Sheffield United. Also uh, losing quite heavily to, to, to Birmingham at home as well. Uh, last time they were on the road, though, they picked up a win against Barnsley. Of course, a tricky, tricky win that was for them. Also, they did lose to West Brom in a, in a competitive affair. 3-2 loss as well. So, yeah, it's hot and cold. They did have a fantastic start to the season. I think it was against, um, I don't know, was it one of the new boys? Peterborough, maybe? I can't I really remember, but anyway, uh, their top goal scorer at the moment was Cornick with two. Jerome's got one, Ruddick's got one, and Bell. Amari Bell's got a goal as well. Uh, Lansbury up there with a couple of yellow cards. Re uh, Gabriel Osho was up there with Naismith also up there with a couple of well, they've all got mostly two yellow cards. No red cards so far for them. Uh, they're attacking uh, avenues have been coming down the uh, left hand side 42%. That's the Amari Bell effect right there. 38% down the right hand side, 20% down the middle. As uh, for so the attacking zones, 39% uh, of, of all the possessions in the middle third, 30% in the opposition third, and 31% in the defensive third. As for the shots, 62% down the middle, 28% down the left, 10% down the right. 50% of all of their shots are in the 18-yard box, 10% in that scrappy W area, and 32% long-range cookies. How about that? So goals coming from five of them coming through open play, one set piece. Goals conceded, though, three through open play, three set pieces, one counter-attack, and one big fat OG. Of course, the shots received from them, 67% down the middle, 20% down the right, 30% down the left. Uh, the shot zones, 47% have been long-range bad boys. Sorry, uh, middle-of-the-range bad boys. 38% uh, long-range cookies and 50% in that six-yard area. Let's take a look at, of course, their starting 11 with this one. Could. They've actually got it's quite con quite con uh, 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 not nailed down starting eleven at the moment. Some spots are nailed down, but I'm going to go with this Sluger between the sticks of Mari Bell and left back, who has been a revelation for them. To be fair, uh, so uh, fair play to them, and he's actually in the team of the season at the moment for who scored. So well done, Mari Bell. Bree on the right hand side. We've got Lockyer. I'm going to go with Burke in the midfield. Uh, I have seen maybe. Um, some other fella, uh, Naismith, uh, been, in, been involved at the back. Uh, traditionally, I think he's a left back, so I'm not too sure. Uh, maybe a, a back three, he might be there. But uh, in a back four, I don't think so. Mapanzu, of course, was linked with Rovers. Uh, but of course, re-signed for Luton Town. Maybe didn't like the offers on the table. Lansbury's also uh, been a good good player for uh, Luton Town so far. Campbell as well uh, is conducting some stuff in the middle of the field there with Cornick, veteran for a uh, veteran, as in been been with Luton for a while. Uh, Adam Nima on the left-hand side and Adiabo uh, up top there. More words to that effect. Uh, so, yeah, some goals in this team, some creativity as well. Bullish. They're a bullish little team and they're going to cause some problems. I do fancy Luton Town to be uh, a decent team this side. Middle the middle of the pack, maybe even flirt with uh, a push uh, for the top half uh, and maybe nether regions of the old playoffs, of course. So we'll see how that pans out. Of course, their record or their resume for this uh, after this match will take on Bristol City uh, down at Thrashton Gate. They'll take on Swansea City at Kenilworth Road, follow that up with the games against Bournemouth and Coventry, and then, of course, complete the set against Huddersfield uh, on the 2nd of October. Uh, let's take a look at the recent.
recent encounters then between these two sides. Uh, this is, well, it's not the recent encounters. It's actually the home versus away form. Rovers, home form, back-to-back -back home defeats for Rovers. Of course, back-to-back 2-1 -back losses. Uh, who'd, have think, who'd have thought it might be a 2-1 loss here for Luton on this one. As for Luton, the committers with the win against Barnsley last round. Prior to that, they did have a couple of losses on the road as well. Uh, the, what we can expect from this match, I've kind of done this in a bit of a weird order. Uh, Counter-attacks from Rovers, the long shots as well. That's our strengths. Our weaknesses are, though, defending against attacks down the wings, defending against skillful players and keeping possession of the ball, defending against long shots is also a weakness. As for our style of play, long long balls attacking down the middle, attacking down the right as well, consistent first level and being very aggressive. Luton strengths though, stealing the ball from the opposition, attacking down the wings, uh, protecting, protecting the league as well. Offside, uh, avoiding offside is a weakness from Luton. They also uh, uh, like to make some errors. Uh, also keeping hold of the ball is a weakness of theirs. They play out wide, long balls as well, crosses often. Uh, they attack down the left, that's the Mamari Bell effect once again. And of course they do rotate their first level. Like I said, there's a bit of inconsistency between who's going to start and not. Uh, the forecast, uh, Luton will steal the ball from the opposition and they will score from a wing play situation. So, uh, yeah, they're, they're backing a bit of a, 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 a some, some problems from Luton Town. Of course, the, the recent encounters over the last five occasions been two wins apiece. Of course, Rovers picking up a draw as well over the last encounter. However, we did last win last round at Uber Park. Last minute.com winner, uh, Adam Armstrong with the goal. So, back-to-back -back games, though, for Rovers over Luton. They did the double reverse the season prior. Of course, all the way back in the FA Cup, we did beat him 4-0. I love a bit of that this weekend. Of course, the, this is the home match. It's, of course, 1-1 lost one against Luton Town. It's not a recent fixture. It's not a common fixture over the past 10 years. It's a recent one that's developed. So we'll see how we uh, pan out this time around. Uh, I've got my prediction coming out you right here right now. No, we've got some stuff. Okay, this is a quick look at the goals, an overview of these two sides compared. Of course, Rovers have scored seven goals to their six. Uh, three of them from set pieces, two character attacks and one penalty. Theirs all come from open play. Uh, they average around about 10 shots to our nine shots a game. A game. This is both home and away. Uh, 1.4 goals a game for Rovers compared to 1.2. And again, conversion rate 15% compared to their 12. As for goals conceded though, uh, they've conceded one more than we have as well. Uh, they've received around about 12.2 shots per game. We've received around nine shots a game. Uh, conceded around about 1.4 goals a game. They conceded around about 1.6 at the moment. 50% uh, conversion rate, 30% for them as well. The goals that we conceded have been mostly from counter attacks. Uh, sorry, uh, set pieces, should I say. Uh, the goals they've conceded mostly have been from open play and set pieces. Uh, Taking a look at some of the uh, the passes per game. They're a more passing team at the moment. There's Luton Town. Uh, uh, 852 passes as well. Uh, is that total? I think that's total. Um, passes per game on average, 341 to our 281. Uh, pass streak of around about three. Um, they're, they're, again, it's heavily favoured for Luton in, in the passing regard. Uh, take a little look at some other bits and pieces here. Of course, this is uh, this is home and away again. Uh, the, the averaging around about two yellow cards apiece. They pick up around about four, uh, 13 fouls to our 12. Four, call, four corners apiece as well. Error success rate goes in favour of Rovers in the past five games. However, the rest, possession, pass success rate, and average player rating go in favour of Luton Town at the moment. That's again home and away. How about ho our home versus their away? Uh, again, we have more shots, 14 to their nine shots as well uh, when compared to our home form against their away form and again pass success rate is better for us at Ewood than it is for uh, Luton Town on the road again they're better with the aerial success rate as well so you know stats are kind of evenly well, a little bit a little bit tilted towards Luton Town but guess what we we played the stats game last time around and it didn't work to our favour I am going to go with a 2 0 win for Rovers on this one I just think that um, uh, with or without Diaz at home Luton Town, this is a game we must win. Uh, the performance has been pretty decent. Of course, the Middlesbrough one was a little bit nervy towards the end of it. The West Bromwich Albion game was also a bit rough, roughy, uh, rope, ropey as well. Uh, but ultimately, I think Rovers have had a good start to the season. We brought in a couple of players. Um, uh, the transfer window was a bit of a bit of a damp squib at the end, a bit of a bit of a bit of a, a lacklustre end to it. Um, but uh, I think ultimately Rovers will, will have enough in the tank to get a result. Maybe a, a first half strike and maybe a late second half strike to kill the game off and give Rovers the three points. That's my pick, of course, on this. Uh, let's take a look at the championship as a whole. Uh, Sheffield United are your possession based side, and as you can see, they're not doing great with that mentality. Same can be said for Swansea as well, struggling a little bit. As for the most aggressive side, Rovers are up there into second spot. Coventry are our top one, top bins right now with 16 yards to the name. Avril, uh, the Aero Duels. Are the moment is Stoke. This they are dominant on that one. 61.3 percent uh, of all your area duels have been won by them. Shots per game. West Brom lead the charge on that one. Coventry not too far away either. And pass actually Swansea lead the charge with that Fulham as well. With Sheffield United not too far away either. But again, that leads to you know it's not really the the recipe for success. As for uh, the the rest of the the, the weekend, uh, Birmingham take a derby. That's on Friday night. Uh, Reading against QPR uh, Saturday. West Brom Millwall. Bo uh, Bournemouth Barnsley. Coventry Middlesbrough. Stoke City against Huddersfield. Sheffield United against Peterborough. Relegation six pointer already. Uh, Swansea up against Hull City, Blackpool against Fulham, Bristol City against Preston, and Nottingham Forest against Cardiff. That's on Sunday. Of course, the game of the day, though, is Adelaide Park as Rovers take on Luton Town. Of course, this is the situation at the table. Of course, Fulham lead the charge alongside West Brom. They are joint top at the moment. Uh, QPR not too far away either. Huddersfield doing absolutely immense at the moment uh, with Stoke and Port.
Bournemouth in the top six at the moment. Roma th Rovers are down to 10th. Right now, Luna into 12th. Just one point separate the two sides. A win for either two sides. They could be in the playoffs, uh, of course, entering, uh, entering into match number seven. At the moment, Forest are going down. Sheffield United is joining them. And Blackpool could also join them as well. Renegade Re Re got a point, uh, three points so far at the foot of the table. That's the situation in the table. The current goal scorer the, at the moment is Alex Mitrovic. He's got himself four alongside Wyman and Flint, who is a bloody defender. As for Diaz, he's up there in fifth spot alongside Swifty Boy. He's got himself three goals as well so far. Uh, we're looking for a Luton Town player. No one in the stats at the moment. Uh, uh, the most assist, though, is Thomas from Huddersfield. Uh, Jarza as well for Cardiff. We've also got four so far. But that's my picks, boys and girls. That's what I think will happen this coming match. Okay, so Rovers between Newtown. The plan is to have a watch long. It's not 100% no, confirmed. There is a bit of a, a, a question mark around it. But for the, I'm, I'm hoping that I'll be there uh, to watch Rovers against Luton And hopefully you guys can join me as well to, to watch the Hatters. Come to Ewood to see if they can uh, surprise us all and, and take the three points. Anyway, that's my thoughts. Of course, be sure to give the video some love. Smash your thumbs up. Smash your subscribe. Check out the links down below. I'm on Twitter. I'm on Twitch. And I'm on Patreon as well. Of course, big, big shout out to Connor Madlin, the latest member of the Patreon gang. Do, 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 do. Come on, Rovers. Let's win it for Connor. And of course, do appreciate love. And until then, we are done.